Hi everyone, today I'm going to be talking about a new free plugin for Cinema 4D called ArtSmart. ArtSmart allows you to easily add artwork from virtually any Adobe Illustrator or PDF file to Cinema 4D release 13 or greater. ArtSmart makes it really easy to add depth to your artwork and also animation using MoGraph effectors if you have the MoGraph functionality. Another great thing about ArtSmart is that you have the ability to update and reload your artwork at any point without losing any work that you've done in cinema. To download ArtSmart, uh, just visit cineversity.com and find the tutorial named CV ArtSmart Download and Install. This will contain all the files necessary and also a tutorial taking you through the installation process. If you haven't signed up for Cineversity before, you only need to create a free account to have access to the plugin. So in this tutorial, I'm going to be recreating this short animation to demonstrate the plugin. I will be having a play around with the ArtSmart plugin options to give you an overview of what ArtSmart is capable of and what can be achieved in a relatively short amount of time. So let's get started. First of all, I'm going to get the ArtSmart object from the plugins menu. You will see that the ArtSmart object appears in the object manager and all of our options will appear in the attribute manager. The first tab we'll be taking a look at is the object tab. First of all, you will see that there is a window labeled art. This is where we can load in our artwork. So I'm just gonna click on the three dot button to the right of the window and find the Illustrator file that I need and hit open. This will load in our artwork and you'll see it appear in the viewport. Underneath the art window, you will see three options with sliders. The first one will offset your layers like so. Just remember that it will offset the layers as they are listed in your Illustrator file. So just make sure that your layers in Illustrator are in the correct order. You can see if I offset my layers now, the premium order comes out before the word premium. So say if I wanted to change the Illustrator file now so the word premium comes out first, it would be really easy. I would simply go to the open in um, Illustrator option and the Illustrator file will automatically open for me. I can then make the changes I need. So I just drag the premium layer to the top. And after I have saved and closed the Illustrator file, I can hit the reload button in Cinema and it will reload the file with the changes made. This can be done at any time, even after animation has been added, so you won't lose anything you've done in Cinema. The second option is a path spread. The path spread is similar to the layer offset, but it offsets the paths. And the third option is the extrude depth. This will very easily add thickness to our artwork. So. I'm going to leave the extrude depth at 1 for now and we'll be coming back to the object tab in a bit to go through a couple more of the features. But first of all I'm going to head to the layers tab to make a few changes to my layers in preparation for the animation. Okay so in the layers tab you have all of the layers that have been imported from Illustrator. They come in ready labelled as you labelled them in Illustrator and they are listed in the same order as they are listed in, in Illustrator as well. So if I open up the premium border here you will see that the options are pretty similar to the options we went over in the object tab. You've got the offset, the path spread and the depth which is referring to the extrude depth. Now, with the magic of recording, I have already added offset and depth values to my other layers, as you can see. So I just need to adjust the offset of the premium border to minus 3 and the depth to 1. The next tab we'll take a look at um, is the caps tab. And if you are familiar with the extrude nerves, you'll be right at home in this tab. Here you can set the start and end cap type, in this case I would like fillet caps on both and I'm also going to set the radius on both to 1.5. So let's render the scene and see our progress so far. Uh, you can see that I now have the beginnings of a nice looking logo but I think the materials need a bit of tweaking. You can see that there are no materials for our logo in the material manager. The objects will simply take on the colours specified in Illustrator. However, um, if we want to edit the materials, it is very easy. I just go back to the Object tab and select Create Materials. And you can see 
it will bring in all the materials into the material manager ready labeled and ready to be edited which is great so i want to edit all of the black materials to have reflection i've got a nice hdri on a sky object in the scene so i will be getting some reflections coming from that so i'm going to double click on the first black material to bring up the material editor and when the material editor is open i'm going to hold down shift and select the last black material so we can be lazy and edit them all at the same time. Now I'm going to go to the reflection tab and add a Fresnel from the texture options. On the white circle I don't want to add any reflection however I'm just going to increase the colour brightness slightly to something like 125%. The red border needs reflection but I'm not going to add a Fresnel on this I'm just going to set the strength of the reflection to around 25%. So as you can see, ArtSmart makes it really easy to organise and edit your materials as well. Just to add, if you want to apply separate materials to your extrusions rounding or cap, you can do this by going to the Layers menu and selecting the relevant layer. You can see in the path drop down that there are options to input materials into the cap and round windows there. Okay, so now it's time to start on the animation. Before we begin adding effectors, we need to go to the object tab again. In the object tab, there is a checkbox called Use MoGraph. Um, this checkbox has to be ticked in order to add MoGraph to our layers. So if we go back to our layers tab now, we will see that a new window has appeared for us to put effectors in. I'm not going to use this option in this tutorial, but just so you know, you can add effectors to all of the layers at once by going to the layer effector tab. In here, you will just see one big window. Now, if I put a formula effector into this window and press play, you will see that every single one of the layers have been affected. I want to add different effectors to different layers, so I need to add effectors via the Layers tab. First of all, I'm going to use two plane effectors to simulate the red border and the white circle dropping into the scene. So I'm going to go to MoGraph, Effector, then Plane. In the Parameter tab, I'm going to change the position Y to 300 centimeters. In the Fall Off tab, I'm going to change the shape from Infinite to Box and I'm going to rename this to Plain Red Border as there will be more than one plane effect in this animation. Now, before I forget, I need to go back to the ArtSmart object and in the Layers tab, find the Red Border. Then I'm going to drag the plane effector into the red borders um, effector window. You will see the red border pop, out, pop up out of the scene which is what we want to see. Back in the plane attributes manager in the coordinates tab I'm going to record the effector going from 0 to minus 200 centimeters on the y-axis between frames 0 and 25 and instead of repeating the process from scratch for the white circle, I'm just going to copy the plain red border and rename it to plain white circle. I'm then going to drag it into the white circles um, effector window. Now, if I have the plain effector selected, I can simply click and drag over the keyframes to select them in the timeline preview and drag them forward to frames 25 to 50. Let's play that back to see if I've done this right. Okay, great stuff. Now the movement is quite boring at the minute, so I want to liven it up with some springiness. To do this, I need to get a delay effector from the effectors menu. And before I do anything else, I want to rename it to delay borders or something like that. Now in the effector tab um, of the delay effector, I can increase the strength to around about 60% and then change the mode to spring. And then of course I need to add uh, the effector to both of the windows, so to the white circle and the red border. Let's play back to see the results. Great stuff. So now we need to concentrate on the text or the detail of the label. Again, I'm going to use a plain effector but in a slightly different way. So this plane effector I'm going to call plane all detail. 
and in the parameter tab I'm going to turn position off and scale on. Then I'm going to tick uniform scale which will tell the affected object to scale at the same rate on all three axes. Then I'm going to enter a value of minus one so you will not be able to see uh, the detail when the plane effector is affecting it. Next I need to give it a box fall off and I'm just going to reduce the fall off slightly to around 20% so that it does affect all of our detail. And I almost forgot this time, I need to apply this effector to all of the layers except for the red border and white circle. So if you just bear with me a second. Okay, and as I'm doing this you will see um, each bit of detail disappearing in the viewport. Okay, now I'm going to animate the plane from X being at zero to X being at 250 from frames 50 to 90. Let's play that back to check. Okay, good stuff. Um, again, the movement is pretty uh, boring as it stands, so I'm going to create another delay effector. This time um, I'm going to give it about 55% strength and again I'm going to set the mode to spring. So I'll just rename that before I add it to all of the layers effector windows. Um, if you're not already aware of this, the delay effector has to be at the bottom of the list of effectors you want it to affect, otherwise it won't work correctly. Okay, a couple more. Great, let's have a look. Okay, good stuff. Sometimes you may find it easier to work with the individual layers to get the effect you want. That's really easily done in ArtSmart. You just need to make the object editable. And this will give you a nice clean hierarchy ready to work with. So let's very quickly animate the red border rotating throughout the animation. So I'm going to find and select the red border in the hierarchy and then go to the coordinates tab and just rotate on the bank by 180 degrees from the beginning to the end of the animation. Okay, so to finish off the scene I set up um, a camera moving around the logo slightly and put a subtle background in with a three point lighting setup I quickly added from the content browser. Um, and this all in all took just under two minutes to render out. So there you have it. Um, as you can see, the plugin can save quite a bit of time when working with Illustrator files and it makes uh, life a little easier when adding animations to your artwork. I hope you enjoyed this little tour of ArtSmart and found it helpful um, and hopefully you'll, you'll have great fun playing around with it yourselves. Um, hopefully speak to you soon.